Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and as you know, I do a show on Truth Frequency Radio called Strange World every Tuesday night, and I try to read emails and take phone calls and do guests, but I cannot get through all the emails, so I have to do separate things and just try to crank through the emails, because I do look at every single email that comes to me, msargent23 at comcast.net, and I do listen to every voicemail. Uh, however, I cannot you know, read all the emails, so here we go. Uh, this one is from Jibra Akil Wilson. It's called When NASA Falls. Hey, Mark, I sure hope this gets read because you are a celebrity without the pay. Come on, that's funny. Well, anyway, you are a flat earth star and you are lucky that you haven't been the focus of the National Enquirer yet. But if they approach you, make sure you get your sizable cut. With that, some thought I w some thoughts I would like to address. One Mains Rye Rizzi with his no for oh yeah the, the Russian guy with his no force video has reached out from Russia. We need to encourage more people internationally to do so. The above screenshot is you giving a shout out to Bro Sanchez. Uh, Bro Sanchez is a, another flat Earth uh, YouTube guy. I responded to your comment. Okay, so uh, before I read this here. I've got to let you know that I was, you know, I, 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 re, I go through a lot of videos and I went to Bro Sanchez's video and I liked his video and he is black. So I just put in a one word comment. I said, word, exclamation point. But there was nothing offensive about that. And that's, but I'm going to read his email anyway. And it wasn't from Bro Sanchez. It was about a guy who follows Bro Sanchez. He goes, I responded to your comment. However, for me, your humor was offensive and I wanted to make sure you know. So obviously I'm black. There are many blacks who are getting on board with the flat earth concept. I want to support you and what you do, but that had really upset me. If you see it as innocent humor, which I did, uh, then you really don't take in consideration your audience's point of view. That was, that was the disingenuous, I've never been around blacks, so I'm kind of awkward, out of comfort zone, corny sense of humor that gets on blacks last nerve, but they always seem to give a buy on. This is the 21st century. Everybody trying to be real with each other on the real truth of the matters at hand. The least you could have said was, congrats, find your angle on things interesting, glad you're on our side. Blacks respects whites who are real and genuine, I will leave that issue there. On the lighter side of things, tells us the first thing you are going to do with your tax check when NASA falls. Uh, I just hope it's a sizable amount from the government. Other than that, good work, just a small gravel patch. Signed, Jay Wilson, Mr. Echo Will. And I, I, look, I'm sorry. I honestly, you know, granted, you know, I'm about as white as they come. I, I don't feel super awkward around black people. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm not from the streets or anything like that. I, I'm not an Eminem wannabe type of guy. So if I offended you, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to offend anybody, and and you're the only email I got, f you know, from that comment. Although uh, how many people you know read the comments and then email somebody based on the comments? Maybe somebody I, I didn't actually you know do a follow up on that comment. So anyway, my apologies if I upset anybody in the black community about that. Uh, this one is from. Don't know who this is from yet. It's called follow up uh, regarding flat Earth non rotating Earth. Good evening, Mark. I shortened the title. <laughs> I just watched part three. Thank you so much for answering my question on your most recent episode of Flat Earth Q&A. I was able to rub it in my non-believing friend's face. LOL. I wanted to see if I could win the email lottery and ask a few more quick questions. Yeah, sure, why not? I was thinking about starting a YouTube channel on NASA deception called Space Bubbles or something and then get people to realize if they lie about space, have uh, have we really gone? What else are they lying about? This way you discredit NASA and then lead to other similar topics that eventually lead to flat earth. Would you recommend this approach? I came to this idea because this is what helped me come along so quickly and it allows intersection into many different topics. Do you agree with the approach like this? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Go after NASA, you know, they are, some people will say, well, no, you're, you're crutching, you're, you're leaning on NASA too much. It's like, look, all roads lead back to NASA. I don't care who you are. Everything eventually leads back to NASA. And that is, can you tell me, you know, you go to anybody who considers themselves a globalist, a round earther, a spherologist, whatever you want to call them. When you, you ask them a question like, can you prove to me that the earth is a globe? 
and then you follow up with a, with a little curveball and you say, can you prove it to me without using the word NASA? Because everything eventually goes back to NASA, the American space program, the American military, the Department of Defense, wing of the government, which is tied to space, and that is NASA. Everything's going to go back to them. And, and people say, well, no, you've got Japanese space organizations in China and India and Russia and blah, blah, blah. Just keep going. It's like, no, no, no. NASA was the first, 1958. They blueprinted everything. So anybody else that created a fake space program, they looked to NASA to for the model. Uh, so, yeah, go after them. Uh, what, what other examples can I give you? Jaron from Jaronism. He loves bashing NASA. Bob loves bashing NASA. We, it's, a, it's an easy target because, one, people can identify with them. Everybody knows who they are. They aren't some obscure Illuminati-esque group that's hidden. They're out in public. They wear white. They smile for the camera. They don't carry guns and they wave the flag. They're the perfect example to go after, which is why I've mentioned them many, many times in the past on a whole bunch of different videos, including this one. So yeah, go after NASA. Uh, absolutely. I mean, look at look at Matt Boylan's channel. He was he literally called it the NASA channel. Uh, let's see. Next one is from don't know. Uh, this one's called NASA Document Linear. Oh wait, is this the same? Uh, let's just read this one. No, different, different, different emails. It might be the same guy, though. Uh, good morning, Mark. My name is Jeff, and I would like to say that you are doing a fantastic job spreading truth about the flat earth. I live in Missouri and have recently noticed the truth with opened eyes. I really find it hard to get my friends to see these proofs, mirrors, hydrodynamics, density, firearm trajectories, etc. Not etc. Etc. As a military vac veteran, I know of the lies and deception firsthand from our government. Most people don't understand the lengths that the officials pulling the strings will go to deceive the masses. I consider myself very open-minded. How do you get someone to see the truth when they are so blinded by pop culture and scientisms? That's a mouthful that they will back up the fake globe model, call you dumb, laugh in idiocracy, and get so defensive. I know you shouldn't start with, hey, how about that flat earth? But the few people I can talk to feel the need of a to the point argument. I like to start with the acknowledgement of some more simple concepts, like Illuminati control theory, and get his attention. But when I segue to the fact that hiding the flat earth is in the Illuminati master's control, this sort of works, but then I lose them. I do know the answer is due to programming, social conformity, and the fear of being considered an outcast for going against popular belief. I have asked one of my coworkers, a Christian, what he thinks about the flat earth, and he says, it's nonsense. Do you know anything about the planet Nibiru? Ha ha. I want to start spreading the word and making the truth known, but I want to be prepared. I would like to collaborate with you as I think I have a talent for making good arguments. Please see attached document referencing linear flight equations, I believe. A flat, non-rotating area or disk. Have you seen this? Jeff from Missouri. P.S. Please send me your survival guide. But that was probably the longest email I have received and, and with a tack on at the end for the survival guide. If anybody doesn't know what that is, I used to have a website uh, some years ago called, uh, called urbansurvivalusa.com. And I made up a free PDF, 100 page, document a uh, little manual on how to survive just a generic apocalypse it was not tailored to zombies or meteors or uh, whatever you want you know uh, some sort of virus it is just the it's generic in that it, it assumes there's going to be a long-term power outage and no matter doesn't matter what the reason for the long-term power outage it's going to be long term and the average American isn't prepared for anything. And yeah, we've got insurance for all sorts of stuff, but we know hardly anybody has any, you know, uh, canned food or bottled water. You know, or, you know just, I'm not being paranoid here. Everyone should have some canned food and bottled water lying around. Look, it's hypocritical. You have insurance for things, but you don't have a little extra food and water. Especially if you have a family. What are you thinking? 
power goes out, you're screwed. What are you going to do? You got to have something that, you know, have something more than what's in the, in the kitchen cupboard, something you just leave off to the side. Anyway, I made a manual on it. It's called Empty Shelves. If anybody wants it for free, uh, just email me. You don't even have to say anything super special in the email like, like, like this guy did. You could just say, I want your survival guide. That's it. And, and I will shoot it to you. It's only like two megs. I had somebody condense it down into almost nothing. Uh, but it comes with little pictures and the chapters are pretty well outlined. It's not bad. It's not a bad read. 100 pages you should be able to get. And you know what? If, if, if you want to be proactive, uh, take it. Print out a copy for yourself. That way, when the power goes out, you can't say, oh, you know, oh, we, won't, we have until the battery life on my phone runs out and then we can't read it anymore. You know, just print out a hard copy for yourself. Oh, let's see here. Email sent to John McIntyre and now to you, Mark Sargent. God bless from brother, brother, John Lang. And let's see. In 1963, my brother-in-law, a few years older than myself, was stationed up in Alaska in the military and was trying to explain to me how they had these magical high-power telescopes, which enable you to see through about 48, 46 inches of ice or water because the Russians and themselves could each see each other's feet and boots 2.4 miles away the two islands not just the head and shoulder two islands not just the head and shoulders i was far far too dense at the time to understand what he was trying to tell me but now i see it perfectly well it's sea or ice level no refraction no mirage no inversion just as you yourself proved uh and then he signs it first peter 1 verse 13 uh be sober-minded be sober-minded Set for my iPhone. Okay. Uh, let's see here. R.M. Ashby writes. Uh, subject. This is a long title. I, how did you even squeeze this into the title bar? Two ways to be fooled. Kierkegaard, much of his work was about Christian love, especially, i.e. Galatians 6.10, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Uh, Kierkegaard, there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what is not true. The other is to refuse to accept what is true. And that is from Soren Kierkegaard, 1813 to 1855. And he was out of Copenhagen, Denmark. God bless from brother John Lang. Uh, let's see, Youngstown, Ohio. Let's see. And that was it from that guy. Flat Earth YouTube video. That's the title of this one. Hi there, my name is Mitchell Smith. I have proof in a way that proves your theory. Let me start with this. I was born a glowing baby. <laughs> that is an awesome start to just about any anything. My parents are both sat sat sangis aka enlightened people recognized in the community and initiated by master oh Hindu terms. Well, I am not sure if you studied meditation and chakras. The third eye or the pineal gland um, no I really haven't but that's okay uh, well they divorced when I was a baby even though you were a golden baby uh, and didn't know my father until I showed up at his doorstep when I was 17 he is a spiritual healer and has 40 years of deep study meditation under his belt well I went there and meditated in silence 12 hours a day then it increased I loved it and started awakening with a mantra given to me well, here's where it gets interesting, and I saw the true reality. My mantra changed the frequency in my brain, and my third eye chakra felt like someone was pressing a thumb up against my forehead. Then, boom! I shot out. It shot out of my body. Oh, I shot out of my body. Spirit travels at the speed of light, and I was in the green frequency, looking at the earth glowing green and it was so vivid and clear that it was more clear than you could see with your physical eyes. And I thought I was a little off. But it put all together when I saw it, but it put all together when I saw your YouTube video. When I saw the Earth, I saw all the continents and all the mounts, aka, AKA dimensional. And the Earth is not capital N O T, a globe like we are taught. It was round like O, perfect circle and not flat exactly. It was like a nice firm C cup breast. Uh, I've got to preview some of these emails. Turn this 90 degrees to the right. Just like that, but a tad more curved. A tad. Your supporter, Mitchell Smith. Uh, P.S. I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yeah, you're welcome. And yeah, you did hear from me. Uh, granted, it took me a little while to get to this email. 
Uh, Steve writes your YouTube video. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I just finished watching your presentation. I found it quite interesting, particularly the parts concerning Southern air travel. My favorite was the last part, but I think the suggestions relative to morality would apply regardless of the shape of the world. Not only that, but having a dome or even an impenetrable shell around a globe still leaves you wondering what's outside. I feel like this somehow limits God or maybe makes him smaller. I envision God as infinity personified, if that makes any sense. So I have no trouble with a universe filled with globes of all types. I see no reason that both God and the universe cannot be getting more and more infinite. I know that's how I would have set it up if I was God. On a different note, I recall reading a book on the glory days of sailing ships. It stated that sailors tended to accept the globe theory before the general population because looking through the telescope at a receding ship in the open sea, the ship appeared to sink into the water until finally the flag went under. Of course, if the ocean was flat, it would recede whole to the limit of the telescope. Can you explain this? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, look up... I've, I'm not going to be able to do it justice without a video, but it's going to be um, vanishing point. And you'll you'll see this. Look up a, a guy named Jaronism, his videos, or David Weiss, uh, or um, uh, Zeteticism.com. Any of those three guys got some wonderful boat videos. Uh, in fact, Jaron's got the most recent. I would check that out if you get a chance. When it goes off into the distance, yeah, it appears that the mast, it, that the ship is sinking, you know, over the horizon, but it's not. It's the blurring, it's the detor distortion from the bottom up. So the hole starts to get mirrored, but and then there's this weird wavering. And then it just vanishes off into the distance. It's never sinking over the horizon. Again, I cannot do this justice with just words. Watch the videos for yourself. Look up Jaronism. Look at the videos he's done in the last probably 30 days. And you will find a wonderful boat video on it. Uh, I hope I'm not being too negative. Uh, no, you're not. I mean, it's, it's one of the oldest arguments there is. Uh, I thought the whole thing was done excellent. I have found a friend who works for ExxonMobil in Australia and New Zealand, so I'm sure he'll be interested. I will definitely agree with you that things are not what they seem and also that it appears that certain groups benefit from this and want to keep it going on. Keep up the good work, Steve Philbrook. Thanks, Steve. Uh, flat Earth question. Mark, I have been looking at the proofs of the Flat Earth for about six months now and many are quite convincing. But when it comes to the path of the sun and its travel, I am having trouble understanding this issue. How do we have a consistent 24 hour days if the sun moves in ever widening circles? That is its movement south as the seasons change. It cannot travel a greater distance at the same speed and still provide for 24 hour days. Does it speed up as its path gets longer? Can you clarify this for me? Thanks for your time, Chris. Um, again, look at uh, deepinsidetherabbithole.com for some wonderful sun explanations. For me, it's a planetarium. So it is a very, very big planetarium that, that's instanced, which means uh, anything you see in the sky can be based on region. It's very, very easy to do in simulations. We're doing this in software. We've been doing it in software for the last 15, 17 years now. I, uh, so when it comes to the, what's happening in the sky, I don't know why people don't focus on the ground more. Maybe because the sky, maybe because nobody, we assume everything on the ground. So we, but when you're asking questions like that, you're leaving out other things. You're, you're, you're focusing on one small aspect of it. How can there be shadows on the moon, a crescent moon, a waxing or waning moon? How can there be a blood moon if there is no earth between the sun and the moon? Because in a flat earth, there can't be. Which me and you say, well, how you're absolutely right. How can there be a blood moon? How can the moon tur sh turn a shade red? And it's because, well, the moon is its own display system. If you have any doubts on that, look up in the uh, uh, how many videos are on YouTube which talk about that moonlight is colder. Check it out when you get a chance. Hopefully, he reads that. Daniel Samper writes, "I think I'm a flat earther now. All my research makes more sense." Hi, I'm originally from Barcelona, Spain. I now live in Austin, Texas. Been a believer and I hope a disciple in Christ since I was a kid went to study at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago in the 90s in their pastoral department. All right. I own an international language company and a high-tech startup. 
I'm in my 40s now, and for the last 10 or so years, I've been looking for answers. I've gathered a collection of my own conclusions and have been quite satisfied with most of them. The main one being God's assurance to Isaiah that he did not need to fear conspirators like the world does. Okay. But rather fear him. He is the ultimate conspirator. For some reason, I discounted Flat Earth a long time ago. I'm now I've now allowed myself to look deeper, and I'm in shock. I feel convicted. I've been stupidly following naturalist ideas and dogmas. Flat Earth ties up pretty much all the holes I still had in my mind. This has affected me emotionally quite a bit, unlike anything I've ever researched in the past. Well, you and me both, man. I see several scenarios in front of us now, and I've just been looking into this for a couple weeks. I'm concerned, I'm frustrated, and I'm fascinated by the prophetic implications of this. There's a lot of work that needs to be done from a Christian, scatological perspective. I'm thinking, who to start recruiting? Who's an expert? I would like to talk with you about the religious angles to Flat Earth. Is there a time better than others to call you? I'm sorry to call you. I'm trying to figure out what I should do next and how I can help out. Also, I have a friend that used to work at a large radio telescope at the University of Texas. Any ideas for smart questions I should ask him that come to mind? Thanks much for all your efforts, Dan. Uh, radio telescope operator. What would you tell him? What would you ask him? You know what? Ask him the really basic question, which is assume, because he's going to know better than most, Assume that, have imagined just for a minute that the world, we're, that we're actually inside a dome and the firmament is real. What, if he was using a radio telescope, what would he change his configuration to see? Is there anything he could do from radio telescope standpoint that would help out, that, that, that would prove to him? You know, that, that maybe, you know, some sort of weird reading, you know, only, that only he would know. It's like, well... If you're looking through a radio telescope, then you would get this sort of information, this sort of bounce back information. If you're looking in this spectrum, and that would be really interesting, wouldn't it? So uh, let's see here. And that was the end of that one. Let's go to the next one. Moving on, this one's called the 1986 Challenger Disaster. I realize that this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Challenger Disaster. How come there has been no mention to honor those who lost their lives? I'm really not asking because I believe they died. I am asking because I want to make waves and see what they would do if enough people asked about it. Thank you for all your hard work on information about the earth we live on. Yes, it has actually strengthened my faith in the scriptures. I also don't look at the sky the same as I did before. Please don't mention my name, but feel free to use any or all of my email message, which is good because he actually didn't sign his name. Other than said, sent from my iPhone. Uh, Brittany writes, question about your YouTube video, they are hiding God. And for those of you who don't remember that it's not a flat, yes, I made a series called Flat Earth Clues, but somebody else, because uh, because I made it a Creative Commons license, and you can take any of the Flat Earth Clues and use any part of them, mash them up in anything you want. In fact, I watched one the other day where they actually added music to it. Couldn't believe they did that. I wouldn't recommend that. But somebody mashed up all the clues together. Uh, I did one called Flat Earth Clues Director's Cut, finally. Uh, I did that for a producer. But uh, another guy did one. Uh, one of them was called uh, Under the Dome Full Documentary. The other one, the other big one was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. I think it's got 1.8 million hits, which is pretty good, considering it's a Flat Earth video. Anyway, that's what she's referring to. Hi, my name is Brittany. I watched your video on YouTube going over the Flat Earth conspiracy. I have been getting into conspiracies now for the last year, researching and watching videos and listening to people's opinions on things. You know, just trying to think outside of the box a little bit. I lost my mother in July of 2015, and something she was passionate about was aliens do exist, and so do mermaids. Mermaids, that is the first time I have actually, you know what? Out of all the things people mention, uh, you know, uh, I believe in just about every conspiracy. I do not believe Elvis is still alive. I believe he actually died of a heart attack on the toilet. Why not? And considering his lifestyle. Uh, I do also don't believe in anything Richard Hoagland says because he says that millions of people live on the moon and Mars and Jupiter and, and that they're all spherical. So I don't believe in that. Uh, but I'm going to add one more thing to that list. I don't believe in mermaids. I mean, mermaids is a wonderful story for sailors for years and years and years. 
because it gives them hope <laughs> that there's a chance they could see some action out on the water there. But uh, I don't believe in them. I, do I believe in, like, the Kraken? Sure. Uh, you know, there's still some wonderful things under the ocean we still haven't found. We do not know a lot about the deep waters of the ocean. If anyone has any doubt about that, read um, the guy who wrote Jaws also wrote a book called uh, Beast, which is about a giant squid. And we still, to this day, have never pulled up a giant squid. Yeah, we've got pulled up a couple, you know, 20, 30 feet long. But those are tiny compared to the ones that are out there. The only way we even knew they existed at all was because sperm whales will go after those things. Those, those suckers will go after them head to head. And the suction cups on a giant squid are as big as garbage can lids. And they're the, probably the, the finest uh, aquatic killing machine. There, Some people say it's a shark. No, it's a giant squid. Read up on those things. They're perfectly designed. Absolutely uncatchable, in my opinion. Uh, you could send a, a whole slew of sub United States submarines, or any nation submarines for that matter. You're not going to catch them. You're just not. Uh, anyway, uh, after she passed, I started looking into things like aliens, what, uh, not since my mother loved that sort of thing, I guess to feel close to her since the pain of losing her is often too much to endure. Well, one thing led to another and it has opened a world full of compelling evidence to all sorts of things I could never even imagine in my life before my mother died. Anyways, I was talking to my husband about the Flat Earth Conspiracy. One of his uncles, who is very well respected, believes the Earth is flat, and this surprised me when I found this out because he never struck me as a conspirator type person or someone who would just look past mainstream media to get info. Of course, my husband thinks he is crazy. He probably thinks the same of me as well. Long story short, my husband wanted me to ask you if the earth was flat, then explain that of snipers who, when they set up to aim, he says they have to adjust their scope with the curvature of the earth. What are your thoughts on this? And yeah, I've got some wonderful thoughts on this. Uh, that is, I've gotten stuff from snipers that say it's not in the sniper's training book. And do you want to send them to a place? Send them to my flat earth testimony shows, which uh, is on my YouTube channel, which covers everything from uh, artillery shells to tanks, tank tank guns to missiles. Take your pick. We're shooting in our military things way, way longer than sniper rifle bullets. And sniper rifle bullets maybe go out to a mile on a good day. And that's usually if you're using like a Barrett 50 cal. But the, the stuff your artillery is shooting 20 miles, missiles are shooting 50 miles, and they're not taking into account curvature of the earth, and they're not taking into account the spin of the earth. Either way. Uh, so find me. Find me a sniper. Yeah, mainstream media, of course, we'll talk about this. But that's mainstream media, the same guys who brought you NASA. So have him look in my... If he thinks a sniper is adjusting for the curvature of the earth, find me a calculation for it. Find me a table for it. Find me something. And if he's adjusting for the curvature, why isn't he also adjusting for the Coriolis effect, otherwise known as, as the spin of the Earth? Again, go to my Flat Earth Testimony shows, start off with the Navy missile guy, and just work your way down from there. I've got, I think, 19 shows on this that nobody's refuted, nobody's recanted. Check them out when you get a chance. Thank you for your time, Brittany. Uh, P.S. I hope... I got the email correct and this makes it its way to you. I love it when people do that. It's like, if it didn't, I wouldn't even see that. But it did. So you lucked out. Paul writes, uh, live show. Uh, let's see, because I wrote him. Hang on one second. He wanted to know about the, when the show was live. And so I, he says, thank you for that. I plan to listen live. And, and normally the live show I do is on Truth Frequency Radio on Tuesday nights, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Truth Frequency Radio. Thank you for that. I plan to listen live and hopefully call in one day if I work up the courage. And by the way, I'm, I'm doing a show tonight. Hope If you guys are listening to this on Tuesday and it's before 7 o'clock, there is a show tonight. Uh, the phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And I don't screen the calls, so you can call in if you want to say some bad stuff. I wouldn't recommend it. Don't be mean. Because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Oh, uh, where's, I've lost my place here. I have a real job as a stockbroker advisor, but I also work for my church on the weekends as a keyboard player. Awesome. <laughs> a stockbroker who's also in a band. I would also like to bring Flat Earth to some friends, but I feel like that would take it, they would take it better 
if it's biblically based. What books do you suggest that have been written that list all the Bible references as a foundation? Thanks again for all that you do. Paul. And I, I wrote Paul back and I said, uh, if you want to, you, you, you're a strong Christian and you want to go chapter and verse, then definitely start off with Rob Skiba's wonderful website called testingtheglobe.com. He quotes about just every chapter and verse there is, but there's not just, it's not just Rob. There's a bunch of people out there in the Christian community that are talking about this. And why shouldn't they? Genesis 1, 6, you know, the firmament, firmament that separates the waters above and the waters below. Um, Psalms 19, 1. And it's the firmament that showeth his handiwork. And that was on uh, uh, Werner von Braun's headstone. It goes on and on and on. What was, you know, when Joshua asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could slay more of his enemies, why didn't he just ask the earth to stop spinning? Why ask the sun and the moon to stop moving in the sky? That's something you'd tell somebody in the planetarium. Hey, buddy, stop this moon for a second. I, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then I'll come back. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Oh, that in the course of the Tower of Babel. Because the Tower of Babel is supposed to build building a bridge to heaven. Bridge to heaven only works if nothing's moving. Because the earth is spinning around and circling the sun. Where's that bridge going exactly? Because it's never in the same place twice. But if it's stationary and there's a dome above us, there's a firmament, then we know full well it's going somewhere. Next email, Flat Earth. Hello, Mark, I'm writing from Mexico City. Yes, you caught a Mexican's attention. <laughs> Funny. I've been trying to find truths about everything, or better said, I've been asking questions my whole life because deep down, I doubt everything we're systematically told to believe is true. Your video about the Flat Earth sounds logical and rings true to me. I just have one question, why, all caps? Why all the effort to buy off scientists and governments to lie on everyone, lie to everyone about the place we're standing on? Easy, power, control, mostly. Uh, you really gonna give? If you're science and you've been building up your institution, your religion for the last 500 years, you really going to jeopardize all that and hand everything back to religion who had said since day one that we're living under a dome, that we're living under a firmament, that the earth is flat and everything's stretched across like a tent and rolls up like a scroll and all that fun stuff. You really gonna give it back to them? Because you're gonna take, you're basically gonna tear apart all the credibility of science. If you admit, if you're science and you admit to this, that the earth is flat, you got a big problem on your hat. Because then if you're wrong about that, you are you right about evolution if science is wrong about the shape of the earth are you right about the big bang as a matter of fact we you know the the trust in science gets knocked down so many pegs it's hard to even imagine what's left of it meanwhile religion you go to them and you say well religion you're right about the the shape of the earth what else are you right about and then comes the awesome responsibility for religion to do the right thing not to go down the dark path like they used to do back in the crusades and the dark ages but i digress oh let's see here so that's why uh, i know our origins must be something different than what we've been taught i know about the control groups illuminati new world order and so on but what's so important about this well i just told you please let me know your thoughts thank you cucho chucho that's his name, C-H-U-C-H-O, Chucho. Never heard that name before, it's good. Desi writes, flat stuff. Hey Mark, keep up the good work. I've been listening to that little debate on Sirius XM radio you did two days ago, and I have a feeling that when you're explaining Flat Earth to the people for the first time, you might want to bring up ships not this period and seeing land on impossible distances, since it is the best argument we have for it being flat. Oh, what he's talking about is the Shade 45. That's m and station, by the way. Uh, hence the name Shady, you know, Slim Shady, uh, where the backwards E and the D that's in the shape of the Detroit Tigers D, because he's from Detroit. And I did an interview on that recently, and it was a very, not a very long interview, but he took calls like 15 minutes in, and these callers had never heard about Flat Earth ever, 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 and they were angry. Oh, they were so angry for me bringing it up. And get a mirror. They're not mad at me necessarily. And they're not even mad because they don't believe it. They're mad because they don't want to believe it. Like anyone that's going into this. You become a flat earther because you try to debunk flat earth. Denial is always the first response. Always the most predictable. Always, always, always. Followed almost immediately by anger. And that's what these guys had going in. There's no way, and you are, insert expletive here, 
they just came at me and I knew they were going to come at me. I mean, not much I can do. Everyone feels this way. Even I was angry the first time I heard it, but I had nobody to call in and yell at. So if you want to have some fun, listen to the last 15 minutes of my serious, I'm sorry, the um, uh, Shade 45 interview that I just did. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll want it. You want to know what the other side sounds like when they, you know, first you want to know why you don't bring up flat earth at a, at a family dinner for the first time without sizing up who you're talking to. Listen to that interview and you'll know why, because these are the responses you're going to get from people. They, they get super, super hostile, super insulting, and, and they take it personally and you got to wonder why, you know, that's, that's, I try to try to explain it to them. Why are you so angry? And they don't even know why they're angry. They're angry because of the conditioning. They're angry because it's the only conspiracy you can't run away from at all. Uh, anyway, he says, I love this, by the way. He goes, try referencing testingtheglobe.com or deepinsidetherabbithole.com. Most of those people that called in to bash you didn't, uh, didn't really hear any major argument that they can look up and go down a path of seeking. That one guy looked up Antarctic Treaty, but that's one out of five. Just try to provide them with some websites to help along. There's a lot of disinformation in the internet, like the Flat Earth Society. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. You are doing great work. God bless. Thanks, man. It's awesome. Uh, next one's from Joseph Lynch. Joseph from Iowa, the Shade 45 show. That was nuts, bro. <laughs> he's talking about one of the callers that called in. It was like, yo, bro. He he's literally ended every sentence with bro exclamation point. And it was it was easy to follow, but I felt bad because he was, you could tell he was rattled. There was a lot of people that were rattled. Anyway, hey man, I just listened to that Shade 45 show and damn, I felt bad for you having to take on that heat. It just goes to show you that what we're dealing with in the general populace, all I got to say is most people listening to that show are most likely not going to be looking into flat earth for obvious reasons. But hey, the good news is that there's a very high exposure show. So if no, uh, so if nothing else, you may have just planted a carpet bomb worth of seeds. Ooh, I like that. Anyway, interesting show, although I feel like everyone, including the host, was up your ass and didn't know jack shit about this. Uh, I'm reading it as it is. Uh, Shade kept arguing about the uh, going west. I don't think he was grasping the west, east, east to west, his circumnavigation of the plane. And also they would have had to visualize. Uh, you're absolutely right. Boy, I got to interject here. Uh, I sent him a copy of the book, uh, Flat Earth Clues. And I can tell you right now, he hadn't even really looked at it. Although he had had a few, uh, I had sent a few questions to his producer. Now, did he look into it at all beforehand? Yeah, maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, you know, he was coming from a hip hop standpoint. I got to give him credit, though, for whoever decided to put me on the show. Great. Wonderful. That, my first serious um, uh, radio interview. Uh, see, they would have had to visualize the flat earth map and understand the concept of what South really is, I suppose. Anyway, sorry I had to take on all that heat on the show. I laughed out loud a few times just because of what I now know and that so many people just don't or haven't looked at yet. Cheers, man. Joe from Amos, A-M-E-S, Iowa. Cool. Uh, Chip writes, subject, calls of hate. <laughs> hey, Mark, Chip from Texas here. Just finished listening to your recent interview with Shade45, calls of hate indeed. I was amused at just how easily tempers flared and the callers really began to lose it. Like all genuine flat earthers, you were polite and respectful. Not a baller trait. Sun Tzu who wrote the Art of War, said, if your opponent is quick to anger, seek to irritate them. Shakespeare said, I think thou dost protest too much. I don't know if that applies to exactly to this, but but I get, I get what you mean here. Uh, I also suspect any criticism of Neil deGrasse Tyson won't go over well with his audience. Uh, like Daniel in the lion's den, you need fear not. The dominoes are falling. Carry on, Chip in Texas. And yeah, uh, let me let me just say one more thing. I mean, I might say it on the show tonight, but about the Shade Forty Five interview, I knew what I was getting into. Uh, I could have I could have turned down an interview at any given point. But you got to remember, there are some shows I will absolutely do, and I encourage anybody in the Flyers community. Look, if there's a hostile show, bring it on, because everybody starts out against Flat Earth, including you. Uh, you, you know, that's, that's the best part. That's why the Morgyle, when he went, went up as a rookie 
against a physicist on the um, uh, the John B. Wells show, if I'm not mistaken, or it was the Art Bell, Art Bell, where John B. Wells won't touch flat Earth because he uh, he has the he has the motivation, the enthusiasm. I want to have people get angry because if they if they get angry about it, that means it's in their head. And if it's in their head, they're going to have to deal with it sooner or later. Quite a few of those callers, I guarantee, are going to look into this. Going, you know, like anybody, it's like this is ridiculous. This is stupid. This is BS. And they're going to go on YouTube or go on any Google search engine, and they're going to look it up, up themselves, and they're going to have to figure it out. So don't worry. The, the yelling will come. Let them let them bring it. Uh, Sherry writes, want to know the truth. Hey, I've just left you a voicemail just a little bit ago. Me and my daughter have been visiting one of your sites. And as I said in my voicemail, we are very spiritual and God-fearing people. And yes, I believe that there are many things that have been kept hidden for, uh, for years from the public and as well as mankind themselves. I know God does exist and I know that he creates perfection just as he has the earth itself. Man knows things, but I agree with you. They will not ever allow many things to be exposed. I believe it's due to the fact that they would not be able to keep God out of all things. Please contact me. Phone number. Thank you, Sherry. Awesome, Sherry. Thank you. Uh, Nickel Plated Productions writes, Flat Earth Puzzle Piece. Hey, Mark, my name is Kevin. I live in Denver, and I've listened to you a lot of your videos on YouTube. To be honest, I've debated emailing and calling you for over a month now because I know sometimes releasing info to people exposing the truth about conspiracies can get dangerous, like some of those 9-11 witnesses who claim they saw something and mysteriously died. Anyway, I have some information I think you'd be interested in hearing, and I think it could be a piece to the overall Flat Earth puzzle you are unlocking. It's too long and confusing to write, but give me a call and I can explain what I experienced. I think you're doing a great job, and I bet it's hard keeping your cool with some people like that on the Shade 45 interview. That's going to go down in infamy, in my opinion. I will say this, though. It was because they were screened. I mean, again, remember, these weren't people that were just calling off the cuff. These people were screened before they get in. Apparently, the phone lines just lit up. Of course they did. Uh, but some of the fastest 15 minutes worth of calls I've ever done in my life. I can guarantee you that you've never heard a similar story like what I'm going to share with you. So I'm hoping that will intrigue you enough to give me a call before I realize I should probably keep my mouth shut. Hmm, maybe. You can use this info on your videos, but I'd like to be kept anonymous. Thanks. Uh, and then phone number, text with a callback number if I can't answer. Tim writes, Antarctic Clues. I think a good research project would be to look at photos, topographical maps, infrared space mapping, etc., searching for irregularities or seams. You obviously have to stitch a continent from a wall, so I'm sure there would be some glaring errors. For example, thermal or topographical inconsistencies would surely be noticeable as these folks never considered the advances in tech available to the public when they fabricated maps and images many years ago and are in the scientific literature already. I'm surprised that you haven't been able to raise enough money to have two ships circumnavigate Antarctica by now. Hint, Sea Shepherd is already down there with five or six big boats. They're experienced and familiar with the area. Really a perfect platform, <coughs> excuse me, and they'll never get static. They're saving whales. I'll, I'll throw in 20 bucks. How many subscribers do you have now? Bet you could do that in one year. Think about this. Folks who promote environmental responsibility would have a lot more going for them if everyone knew that this is really our only home. No moon, no Mars, no interstellar, only this. I'd bet the wars would end pretty darn quick, too. Cheers. Um, Cavillo Arturo writes, Flat Earth Clues Interview 23. 23? I'm up to like 90. What happened in 23? I have to look at the... Hi, Mark. How you doing? I hope you are fine. Just passed it with flying colors. You handled it perfectly. Congrats, my friend. Keep it flat. I'm wondering if he's talking about Shade 45 interview, which I think was 88. Don't know. I don't think he... Eh, it doesn't matter. I'll look it up. Thanks, though. Marsha writes... Which one, the blue or red pill? Dear Sarge, my name, oh, it's not Marsha. They're using Marsha's account. Uh, my name is Mark Webster. Please, <laughs> please don't share my name with others. Well, Mark, too late. I'm a US Navy vet. I can verify that when I was underway at sea, I was standing lookout on the USS Hopper DDG-70 watching 100 feet above sea level one night, searching for surface contacts 
and on the horizon a single light appeared so I reported it. It's bearing to CCS who can see a screen for spy radar and the exact distance of that contact. He said to me, how is it possible that you can see 42 nautical miles away? That would make this ship's mast light over 925 feet high, which is unheard of. We were taught that the horizon was 12 miles away and not even 12 nautical miles. Nautical miles, by the way, is, is longer than statute miles, which is land miles. I don't know why. Why is, why is knots faster than miles per hour? Why is it different on the ocean? Who knows? Um, I now live in Blanding, Utah. I can see over 85 miles almost any given day to Shiprock, New Mexico from home, but now elevation plays a factor. I'm writing to you this because I want to point you in a direction uh, where you can see what I think is going on in this world. I'm a believer in the King James Bible. Note this, the Bible only mentions the words planets once in 2 Kings 23 verse 5. Uh, and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. Planets is the only meant is only mentioned here and then in the King James and other revisions of the Bible. This word has been changed to constellations, which is something completely different, right? Go figure. I think that you're not just up against science, the government, or Freemasons. You're battling maybe the oldest, idolatrous, most wicked, wicked demonic religions on the face of the earth, and you need the armor of God, which is all written about in his word, if you are ready to seek and understand who he is and what he created for us here. Look and see what was just built in Times Square and in London as well, the Arch of Triumph. This arch was the first built for ball worship and it's very dark rabbit hole you're looking down, so be careful. Feel free to write me with further questions. Thanks, man. Sorry I mentioned your name, but I'm not going back and deleting it. Put yourself out there. That's what I'm saying. Uh, let's one. Dear Mark, I'm a recent flat earth convert who was previously a very fanatical amateur astronomer. Uh, we'll make this the last one because it's kind of long. My name is Alex. I recently, June of 2016, gotten into researching flat earth because of a friend. And as I'm an open minded entrepreneur, at first I thought I was open minded. I would just denounce anyone trying to prove or teach me something other than what I knew. But because of my nature, I would go home and study and research what people told me. The last three plus years, I have been devoting my free time into astronomy, and now I've learned more than I can write about mathematical numbers to different objects in space. So anyone saying something about the universe, I would basically shut them down before giving them a chance. Well, now, as I'm an avid believer of flat Earth, it's quite the opposite. I let them do the thinking. I'll just flood them with content they can study and watch on their own. This being said, I've been doing tests and climbing on mountains, and his English, is, by the way, is not perfect here, as I'm an active mountaineer and hiker in Seattle, Washington, right down the road from here, because I'm currently doing this from Canada, Victoria. And trust me, the distance we can see from Mount Rainier is remarkable. Very true. I'm talking Mount Jefferson, almost halfway to Oregon, and we are only standing at 10,000 feet at Camp Murr. M-U-I-R. By calculating Earth's curvature, that mountain should be under the horizon, yet I can see almost half, as the other half is part of the lower elevation cascade range, of it still sticking up. I was able to convince my dad enough for him to now do his own research and have him asking me questions constantly. I have friends and family come over to talk about Flat Earth, as they know I'm the guy that was all about space and now a believer of Flat Earth. One thing I want to bring up to you, as I love looking at everything realistically and scientifically as well, is if there is Earth's atmosphere and past a certain point empty vacuum of space, why does it not combine or mix at a certain point? Yep. Sure, they might say, oh, it's invis it is, and it's invisible force holding the sections apart from mixing. Okay, then explain how does our atmosphere pick and choose to let the space shuttle go straight through it, even at a special angle, into the vacuum of space and not the atmosphere itself. Also, even if the shuttle or space vehicle does go through, why, when it punctures a hole in the atmosphere, does the vacuum of space on the other end not tear open the rest of the atmosphere and suck it all in a vacuum of space? 
as there is a lot more vacuum in this vast universe than there is atmosphere in our Earth. Wouldn't the vacuum overpower our atmosphere and tear it wide open? As a puncture during a flight in an airplane at high speeds tried to suck everything out of the plane, wouldn't the vacuum of space do the same thing in an Earth spinning 1,000 miles an hour and 66,000 miles an hour around the sun? Just food for thought to the average globe earther. I want to share something I've been thinking about after listening to a few videos. How do you get thrust in space travel? If in a vacuum, supposedly, there is no friction or matter to push off of, even if you create combustion where half explodes inward and the other half explodes outward to create thrust, basically pushing off the explosion itself, not pushing off the matter like a rocket in the Earth's atmosphere does. Also, you need oxygen for combustion. So now you've got to store so much fuel and oxygen for sufficient space travel. That sounds like a crazy amount of fuel. Even if it works, how much microcombustion do you need for proper maneuvering in all sorts of directions through the vacuum of space? Last, I was observing how the sun and moon function in a flat earth and the relation it has to how everything runs on this earth. I may be crazy to think this theory, but could it be possible that the deity and God created this earth to function like an alternator slash generator generating electricity and creating the magnetical field that the earth has? Given that being said, given that being said, could be why we have electricity in the clouds, northern lights, radio waves, and even have the ability to make electricity just by turning magnets around some metal wires and bam, electricity which also runs through water, metal, even living organisms like us mammals. I mean, there is no limit to the power of electricity, even Tesla creating wireless electricity lighting up as I think it was five square miles of lights wirelessly. On a side note, it could be possible that after his death, the authorities took his work and used it for their gain, like hovering crafts, UFOs, using the magnet, magnet, magnetism of Earth to float objects and machines, but that's just a theory, right? I thought... I'd share these things with you, Mark, as you are the guy I follow most on Flat Earth. You are devoted to it, and I see you getting very far, revealing the truth. God bless you in this venture, and I know I know you have my support. There is a recent clip of a show I watched called Supergirl. I know that one. Very interesting, as they themselves in the show mention how traveling through space is impossible, yet the whole show is about her traveling through the galaxy, coming to Earth. I couldn't attach it. Uh, the file was too large, but it's on Netflix, season one, last episode, about 29 minutes into the show. They talk about it. Hope this was some good info I found for you and encouraging. Don't let anyone pull your hands down. I have no idea what that means. No, no, no. Anyone pull your hands down. Anyway, sincerely, Alexander Zadnapravisky. You know what? Let's end on that one. It's a long one, but uh, it's a, it seems like a pretty good email. So talk to you guys next time. What is this? What is this? Is Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> nice.